All right, what's up, people? We're going to do this breakdown and uh, show you guys all the different ways to draw and uh, reload a pistol from some of the best guys in the world. Going from USBSA gear, in the future we're going to do one from AIWB and rifle stuff and movement stuff and shotgun and I mean we could do whatever. It, endless possibilities of, of these breakdowns we can do in the future. And the reason I want to do these is because five or six years ago when I started into the pistol shooting thing and, and rifle shotgun and really wanted to get good at shooting, I would have killed for something like this. So that's basically, I try to think back and, and think of what I would have wanted and then I try to recreate that, that material on the channel here. So as we kind of go through this, there's a few things that I want you guys to do. One, I organically ran through this whole thing and talked the whole time and then just edit out some pieces. So I, whatever popped out at me at the moment is what I talked about. So if there's something that pops out at you with the person's technique that I didn't say, please put it in the, in the comments. And then two, I want you just to understand how much film is important. Film has changed shooting, okay? The internet shared the film, but film is what changed shooting, all right? There is a million different ways to do shit, and, and a lot of instructors 10 years ago were teaching, this is the way. And film and the internet being able to share that film has changed that and said, well, you say that's the way, but I've got... A mountain of evidence that says these 38 people that are the best shooters in the world all do this shit different so what are you talking about tactical Timmy and then we started to understand that if you separate all the tactical stuff and all the guns to fight stuff and start to break down skills and do just skill building based exercises you can shoot through the roof now competition guys knew this a long time ago but competition rule was smaller it's now growing it's now bleeding over into the special forces world heavy and it's starting to bleed into the rest of the military hopefully slowly that's just a slow process and then in law enforcement it's it's really the whole gun thing is is starting to come around now yes there's 80 million goons for every switched on individual but <laughs> we're 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 we're, we're working on that ratio, and this is the way to do it, showing that there's a million different ways to do things. And then, like I said, as we go, we're gonna break down, do these breakdowns uh, in different areas, in different genres, and, and really look at uh, pretty much everything. It's, it's endless possibilities. So, the film stuff, look at how people are doing things, uh, the, the, the draw, the reload, where their hands are going, what they're doing, where they're coming back to, their top triangle index, the, uh, the whole works, all of it, just kinda, Pay attention. And like I said, if if I miss something, really put it in the comments and, uh, you know, because I could have went balls deep into each person uh, <laughs> uh, for like an hour or two, right? Just wear them out. But I can't do that, right? We got to expedite the process a little bit and, uh, and uh, run through it. So I just kind of went through whatever popped out at me, whatever I saw in the moment there as I'm playing with the, with the uh, app. Um, it allows me to do that. I use the coach's eye is what the app is called. You can video yourself, use that app, slow it down, speed it up, mess around, stop yourself. Uh, when you film yourself, make sure if you throw it in an editing software or something, you choose a high frame rate. Some of these videos are better than others on filming and, and, and depending on what the frame rate is. You know, I'm starting to learn a little bit about that shit. I really don't know anything about it, but some work better than others when you start to slow them down. So when you're filming yourself, if you can set your camera up in the right way, you can really get something done. And then, uh, let's see here. Do I have anything else to say? Uh, just watch watch everybody's stuff and, and really understand that that uh, as a beginner Basically what I tell beginners is I want to give a beginner a day one beginner one door to go through Like think about if you're getting chased by a damn cougar and you're running and there's one door to go through That's an easy decision. You're gonna run right through that door if there's two doors uh, a little bit of hesitation that cougar might get you right Okay, so what I like to do is give a beginner one door, and as you get better, we can start to open up and have more and more doors for you to choose, more and more options. Door number one, two, or three. Okay, as you get better and better and better, and you start to work some of this stuff out, and you're putting in the time dry practicing and all this shit, next thing you know, you've got 40 different doors, which is exactly what we're showing here. 
40 different doors to go through. And at that point, when you're switched on and you really know what the hell you're doing a little bit, you can then just experiment with every door, right? You can't go wrong at that point. You know, you might take a step back and a step forward and mess around a little bit here and there, but experimentation is the key. Okay, so starting off, we're going to go with JJ Ricasa, one of the best to ever do it. A little 2 Reload 2 here, running a 92X open gun, which is pretty freaking cool. And I want you guys to pay attention to the gear sets of all these people. If you're running a limited or an open setup with a big old magwell and a race holster that, that uh, you only have to come up just a little bit to get out of and then you got your magazines on your belt straight in the front, it's just going to be different technique sets for different gear sets. I'm, I'm sure that JJ tweaks his techniques lately when, his, uh, when he's running production or carry optic style setup and, and legal gear for those divisions, it's going to be much different. Uh -huh. Okay, so first things first with this, just a normal 2 reload 2, having some fun, ripping on it. First things first we notice here is pretty cool. Look at the Mr. Spock hand that he's got going on. So really used to, to those open guns with the crazy triggers and, and uh, doesn't want to do anything stupid. So if he's going to be super aggressive in his draw, he wants to get that trigger finger way up out of the way, clamp down on that thing, get it up out of there. Disengage his safety, do his thing, marry as soon as he can, and drive to the target. Now, having the open holster and everything allows him to start going forward immediately, and you notice his left hand doesn't have to come up very high to marry. He comes up to about the belly button, and then he's able to just get on and marry and, and uh, try to build that grip as, as best he possibly can, as early as he possibly can. And that, uh, you know, doing things sooner, not faster, that whole thing... You'll, you'll start to see a trend with these guys and the way they want to do things. So, bang, bang. JJ has probably about a middle-of-the-road reload zone as far as how far he's bringing the gun back, as far as what he's doing to index his right arm or his shooting arm. Um, it, it's about middle-of-the-road, not too high, not too low, not too close to him, not too far out. So basically pretty pretty solid stuff he's coming but one thing to notice is even with that big magazine and the open setup he's still dominating over that magazine and getting a really good grip on it even though he's only got to flick it up in and sometimes you see guys with the open setup and the big giant mag wells and the big giant magazines they'll they'll get a little lazy or lackadaisical with how they grab the new mag because it's so easy to fish it in there uh, but these guys don't take any don't take any shortcuts, right? And if you're going as fast as he's going here, you got to have your shit together. So, bang, throwing it up in. And really, that's what the beauty of having this setup is, because it's basically right under the gun. You grab it, you chuck it up in, and you're done. So, if you see, he just kind of has to flick his arm down, rotate his elbow, flick his wrist a little bit, and bang, it's in the gun. JJ doesn't roll over too far, probably about a 45 or so. Pretty contrasting style here is Ben Stagger. Looks like he uh, just stuck his head out of a car window at high speed. And uh, you'll see him draw a good angle here doing some dry practice. One trend that we're going to see is we don't want to go up any higher than we have to. So efficiency would tell us to come up just till that thumb and, and hand clears the gun and then snatch down and get to it. So you're going to see a nice solid draw, hand coming up to about the belly button, then it starts to roll over. Pretty, pretty normal stuff. And basically with all these draw stroke techniques, you're not going to see a whole lot of differences. Ben, really what his thing is, is he reloads the gun much differently. And he does go low. So he's down clear around his nipples. And he also comes really tight to his body, close in. So you can see how close he is. He's only a couple inches from his chest. He, he's down around that nipple area. And then also Ben doesn't roll the gun over very far. He has like a palm flick right here at the end where you see his palm fling, okay? And you'll see that kind of uh, throughout. But his palm drives and he rolls it in in, uh, in a pretty cool way. And then also one thing to note is Ben almost brings his hips 
and brings the magazine pouch over to the center line a little bit when he goes to do his reload. So if you watch, as soon as he gets to, to start his reload, watch those hips roll around. He actually shifts his weight and he's pushing his ass that way to, to bring the magazine pouch over. But that's a cool thing to note. He's kind of shoving that around. And then bang on there, really aggressive, positive grip on there. And then boom, and then that little palm that little palm heel, boom, in there. And if you notice, again, when you don't roll that gun over very far, you can't see the magwell very good, but the roll on, I mean, his grip is built like now. So he doesn't have to do anything crazy to roll back onto his grip and present the gun again. Obviously, he's low and, and close, but hey, you can't argue with how fast he is. So here's Tim Heron. Tim Heron is uh, really a solid, solid guy when it comes to this kind of stuff. His mechanics are just fluid and smooth and the whole works. He's coming up, boom, getting on that gun as soon as he possibly can. Nice purchase, hand. He actually does slap his stomach and really aggressively uses that right hand on him. He's a left-handed guy. Uh, coming out, marrying, using a uh, 1911 single stack. Bang, bang. Two shots. This was a two reload two at 15 yards he did it in like 2.6 seconds so pretty ridiculous and then he does have a magwell on this gun but it's still a stink a single stack so it's a little bit of a tougher gun obviously you see he's got a really positive purchase on that single stack mag all the way out at the bullet tip pretty much and then if you watch uh, Tim just has a little bit of a lean over just a little bit of a lean over to open that up a little bit and just a quick flick so he kind of comes up 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 with that new mag and then a quick little flick in and he kind of does that palm heel style as well doesn't roll the gun over very far basically the old thing of of pointing the magwell at the new mag so not rolling the gun over very far hits it and then that little heel that palm heel slam and then drive and from him being a 1911 shooter good chance that he developed that really hard palm strike in all his years with 1911s. Okay, so Bob Vogel here. Bob's doing an El Prez, and while he's doing the turn and draw, we may as well talk about it. First thing to do with turn and draw, find that target. So his head is whipping around, and he's trying to find that target. But if you notice Bob's gear set, he's got a high holster. He does not run a drop offset or anything. He's got a high holster, high gun, and he's a long-armed dude, or at least looks like it. So he's really got to come up high to get on his gun and his reloads, and uh, you'll see he kind of does everything tight, but fairly high. And then uh, his top triangle is a little different. High arms, high shoulders, uh, high elbows, I should say. And uh, we all know Bob's just a beast. And he's just doing a little demo in front of a class right here. So this isn't a run that, that he's trying to set the world on fire. This is just him doing a good, solid run, showing guys what's what's capable. As we look at Bob's reload, one, he gets onto the magazine release quickly. He's getting that mag the hell out of there by the time he gets into his position. I tell people all the time, when you're hitting the magazine release and bringing the gun in, you basically want the magazine to fall down and hit you in the feet. So you don't want your magazine to fall down out here. That means you're not doing two things at once. You want to bring the gun in and hit the button at the same time so the magazine has momentum and it's flying in this way down towards your feet. You'll basically see that from everybody on here. Um, that, that actually hits him in the foot. As you see, Bob gets her nice and close. He's up in there tight. And he keeps it fairly high uh, to where his eye line and the muzzle aren't, aren't much different. But he gets her nice and close up in, and that's probably from his years of shooting IDPA, winning IDPA championships, kind of reloading behind cover, that whole thing. And then one cool thing that Bob does, as you see, he rolls the gun over just a little bit more than some guys. And if you see, he rides that, uh, that muzzle high as he uh, reacquires his sights and pushes that top triangle back out. Pretty neat style, and you'll see him do this all the time. And Bob is an iron sights guy through and through, basically. So I would imagine he's kind of driving, trying to pick that front sight up at the last second, and then bang, he's ready to shoot immediately. All right, as we look at uh, Max Michelle here, this is 
an open gun, open rig, open setup, the whole works. So you don't really get a good good look at Max's draw. But Max's draw is damn near the same as everybody else's. The draw is, is something that you get the gun out of the holster and present it in front of your face. <laughs> There's not a ton that you can do that's crazy different. Uh, for the most part, most guys are doing it the same. Now, Max's reload, you'll see some pretty cool stuff from this certain angle. Okay, one thing is this right here, bang. We're getting on that magazine release. You see exactly kind of the roll, and Max leaves it out in front of him, but again, he's bringing it in and hitting the release, so that magazine's going to hit him in the feet. Um, he he kind of keeps it out to the right side until about here, then you see him slowly start bringing the gun back into the center line a little bit, but it almost looks like he's leaving it out and up, getting on that magazine button out, and then all of a sudden just kind of rolls it right down into a spot to meet that left hand. And if you notice with Max, he throws this elbow out and goes down and up in like a little bit of a wrist flick and just slings it right up in there. Pretty freaking cool to watch. Now if you do notice, he's using really big magazines. So he's got a fairly low grip on the magazine as it comes in and out and that's something you can afford to do when you have a big old magwell and this was an awesome looking reload but he did miss a little bit so as he misses just slightly right there with a production gun or a carry optic gun that's a that's a that's a stubbed toe right there uh, with a big old magwell he's able just to kind of fiddle boom drive it in like nothing ever happened and keep keep working so this right here looks like a limited gun because he's definitely got a, a little weight or something out on that 17L it looks like big long daddy but he's running out of a magazine setup that's basically carry optics legal so just some base pads and a, and a three o'clock magazine setup but does look like a limited gun and it does look like a, a magwell so uh, Shane really cool technique here kind of opens up a little bit what I've found is opening this shoulder up just a little bit while I'm coming back and then that allows you to not have to flick your wrist quite as much. It allows you to kind of grossly do it with your entire arm and drive the magazine up in with your whole arm. So I really uh, have studied this and have looked at this and have changed my style uh, over the last couple of months. And then when I started looking at this film, I realized that, that Shane basically does the same thing I'm doing. Uh, which is pretty cool to see. Shane's a total badass. So he's running uh, bullets forward. Um, obviously you can see that pointer finger down getting a really aggressive dominant grip over the magazine and then you can see right here you see his fingers release and that's where he's flicking his gun so he's getting that old mag out again old mag is hitting him in the feet because he's got that momentum getting it out and you see the shift and then another thing basically he's not rolling over a whole lot magwell pointed towards the new mag. That's basically all you got to do. Now Shane keeps her nice and high. He's coming in fairly tight, but he's keeping it high. So if we just look at all the different guys, you see that there's there's a, a million different ways to do it. This is going to be the only difference in draw that we're really going to get into. These are some scoop draw clips of me. All right. Now I'm doing a fast draw here or a fast drill here, and if you notice. I'm running up and as soon as I get to the holster I'm trying to really grind my middle finger and run up against the holster with my middle finger so grind in that middle finger boom and then as soon as I can get that that thumb to wrap around the gun I'm squeezing super hard right here so the second my thumb feels my hand, I'm going up against the holster, and as soon as my palm feels that I'm at the end of the gun, I can really jerk my hand around it and uh, pretty much squeeze really hard one time right here. And then I, I get to loosen up just a little bit. I know I've got the good grip. Everything's solid. I'm waiting until I cross. Okay, then I'm putting my hand in there. Same old, same old from there. The only difference is, is how I actually grab the gun out of the holster. Ding, ding. Uh, working fast drills here. No slide lock or anything. And then this is uh, just, just my reload technique. Again, like I said, I'm doing a little bit of that Ben Stager action right where now I'm opening up my left shoulder a little bit and as you see I'm shoving my ass just slightly 
to that side and I'm opening it up just a little bit. I don't know what it is about this, but it, it makes it more of a gross movement for me. And if you notice, my wrist doesn't have to flick that much. My wrist just basically straightens and then my whole arm drives the magazine in. Instead of me having to flick my wrist and do a whole lot of management with my wrist, I can drive my whole arm through that. And then what I like to try to do is think about driving my, my left arm from mag pouch to the target. So I want to drive the entire reload back to the target with my left arm. Uh, that's harder, that's easier said than done, but it is something that I like to try to do. And then all I got to do is build my grip. I turn the gun over about a 45. Again, I just want my mag well to line up with my mag pouch. Uh, so I can just drive that in there. I like to try to have a nice middle of the road style of, uh, of reloading and everything. This is Milspec Mojo. I don't have any reload stuff, but that is a level 3 holster, and we will just play this. Okay, well, he did do a reload shit. Okay, so I, I got another clip here. And first of all, this guy's trigger finger is one of the fastest I've ever seen. And his draw is super fast. Uh, for a level 3 holster, it's ridiculous what's going on there he's disengaging and flipping forward and doing his thing I've had a lot of people ask me if my draw technique is any different out of a retention holster a level 2 or level 3 and really it's not the only thing that's going to change is defeating that retention and obviously you can tell that it can be done with some reps <clears throat> now I don't even own a level 3 holster I have a level 2 holsters but uh, for him to flick that and and hit his button I mean it's it's pretty damn impressive and then his trigger finger is just silly. So here's Matt Little, gray beard. Nice little turning draw action. Coming around. Obviously spotting that first target as soon as he possibly can. Getting the gun out and up. Coming into his kind of normal draw position. Trying to roll around and draw as, as similar as normal as possible. Driving the gun. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you see even in that little bit he's shifting his hips to transition the gun and push the thing around. And then coming back for that reload. You see he rolls over just a little bit more where he's got a little bit of a, a wrist flick. So as he kind of comes back he's got a little bit of a wrist flick. And you'll see actually a couple guys coming up. They kind of do that same same thing. Okay a little bit of a wrist flick and shit like this it, it's all about your your feel it's all about you coming up with some little thing that puts that gun in the same position all the time so this little flick of the wrist that he's doing and bringing it into that position that reload position it, it, whatever it is that's putting that gun in that perfect position every time. It's almost like that, that little process, that little recipe that you make. And his roll on is really solid, driving that thing in and rolling on. As soon as he builds the grip, he's pretty much done. Just build grip, bang. So solid, solid work there. So <clears throat> as we go to another guy, he does kind of the same thing, a little bit of a wrist flick there. So you watch... He's indexing, got his index points obviously on his gun and his holster before he draws. Boom, comes up, conventional draw style, gets that left hand over there at the belly button area, just waiting to meet that gun. Comes up under, bing, bang, boom, does his thing, another four aces drill. And then you see he really flicks this gun, okay? Now, I don't know if he's pulling the gun like I do, pulling the trigger guard a little bit as he goes, but he really, like an exaggerated flip to get that thing where he wants it. And then if you look at that grip on the gun, man, he really flicks that thing. So he's got to do a little extra roll to, to, to put his whole position back together. The elbow's kind of out, then he brings it in. And then if you notice one thing that Joe does here, he really slams the gun onto the mag. So he's kind of doing a double take there. I I really recommend for people not to do this at first, but if you're putting in the reps, you can you can literally, as we've seen through this whole video, you can do anything you want as long as you put in the reps and find that thing that works for you. So as you see, he brings both hands together really harshly. Boom. And then that's another thing that the Magwells, uh, the limited guns, the open guns, they're going to give you some help when it comes to that kind of stuff. Here's another guy, Jack Shoots, Instagram guy, super good shooter. 
he's got a cold style. He uh, he's a shorter guy, and he presents the gun really close to him, just like Frank Proctor, really close to his face. So he does a nice little flick too. You'll see. Uh, I don't know if it's you 2011 guys, but. He's just rolling, does a nice little flick there, and, and puts it into his position. And then as he slings that magazine in, he rolls back on. Look how <laughs> he doesn't have to go anywhere, man. He's putting it back in, and he's out. That's his position. That's where he shoots from, and he does work from there. So it's an interesting style and an interesting way of doing things. But I'll tell you what, it, it works because he can he can reload the gun, and he's back up in his position ready to go. So... It's a, it's a, it's a definitely an interesting style of things. All right, so I just added this in here because it's ridiculous. All right, this is Keith Garcia, and we're gonna watch him with a pistol here in a second. But this is a .9 reload with a rifle, and it's not even an AR-15. It's a .308. It's a POF Revolution, which are pretty cool. But check this out. <laughs> Oh boy! All right. So Keith is uh, is just a, a crazy good shooter. Now I want you to watch. Keith has um, a, about as close to a scoop draw as you can get. I've watched several of his videos, and he's not scoop drawing, but man, is he close! And I'll tell you, I guess maybe it's from so many reps that that he doesn't have to come up over that gun, but. He's damn near scoop drawn. He just kind of comes in on the gun. As you see, kind of from the side, he's coming in on it. And bang, snatch, and he's gone. So damn near damn near a scoop draw, almost like a hybrid scoop draw. As you watch, Keith does shit that's, that's just silly. Just like that AR reload, he just he's just one of them guys. Uh, one of the best shooters on planet Earth. So three gun, all of it. Shotgun shit that he does is just crazy. Um... As you see, he's coming in nice and tight. Keith uh, puts his head down a little bit, so when he goes to his reload, you notice nothing really changes. He kind of comes in, ding, comes in, ding, comes in, ding. You know, nothing changes. He's doing so little work to get such crazy amount of shit done. Just watching him, he's just a super efficient guy. So we'll just watch this in all its glory here. He had 11 magazines, I guess. So here's another guy that I really I love to watch, Frank Proctor. The guy just is so good. He's, he's a grandmaster shooter, um, and he just looks like he's going slow in everything he's doing. But if you look at the timer, <laughs> what he's doing is not slow. Let's watch the first reload. Bing. Coming in, rolling over, nice tight, boom, keeping the gun high, rolls on the gun. He's another guy that has a really close top triangle, so he, the, the distance between his face and the back of the gun is, is fairly short. This, is, this guy's name is Eric Camp, but the guy <clears throat> reloads the damn gun harder than I've ever seen anybody else. He, he draws fast, he reloads fast, and... I mean, it's just hilarious how hard he hits the gun. <laughs> I mean, I don't get it. I swear, I don't. Like, I could do that, I guess, once <laughs> and get lucky, but there's no way. I'd be bashing, like, magazines would be on the floor way more than they'd be in the gun. So his the velocity of his hand coming up to the gun and in is so ridiculous. Uh, but but his style of reload and everything he's doing is really pretty simple. He does bring the gun down to the to meeting the both the hands. Boom, slams them together. But man, it's it's just something else to watch. That is that is just some crazy stuff. Let's watch that full speed one more time because it's just something. So this is Matt from X Ray Alpha. And uh, just a super solid shooter, face shooter guy, SF guy like like uh, like Matt Little from Greybeard, and and all these guys that are coming over to the competition world and just crushing it. 
Uh, he's coming down onto the gun nicely, same old, same old, basic draw style, conventional draw style. Coming up, top triangle, nice and relaxed, in front of his face, no big deal. And then here we'll see a couple of reloads. As you see, kind of just a simple style of reloading. And again, not rolling that gun over super far, just basically throwing it right there, pointing the magazine well towards the source of ammunition, and boom, slamming it in. He also hits the gun fairly hard. When he throws his reload in there, he's not a... Um, He's not really the 80-20 kind of guy. He's more of a 95-5 maybe <laughs> as far as 90% down, 90% and then slowing down that, that, that last little 10% into the gun. That 90-10 rule or 80-20 or rule is what a lot of people use. Um, Eric Camp is obviously a 100 all the way. He, he goes 90 to the magazine and then 110. <laughs> to the gun so crazy uh but you can see mad from x-ray he does it uh he's fairly rough and and throwing that damn thing in there as well so um probably a 95 5 ratio there yeah hitting there pretty hard so this is a two reload two that i did i'm pretty proud of that was a 1.92 um with a 59 draw and a 95 load I think so I was pretty happy with that obviously Brandon Wright doing a little bit of just steel work dinging along and that was a slide lock road load so Brandon kinda comes in a little bit low he's got a really relaxed style too phenomenal shooter right shooting on Instagram um, just a little bit of a lower style comes in ding Slide lock load comes up driving just a just a badass shooter uh, does a lot of things extremely well and just another look at another load pretty pretty cool to see all these different techniques and all these different styles so that's kind of why I wanted to put all this together. Point nine zero.